There we go. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time and uh, joining us on this uh, quick webinar of uh, Packetrap MSP, the RMM component to your managed services business model. Packetrap MSP, quickly, um, I don't want to go back into the history of where we started from and where we came from, uh, but uh, we've been around for about six, seven years, and uh, basically we are a holistic IT infrastructure monitoring solution, i.e. anything with an IP address we can monitor. Um, there's different levels of monitoring that we do for different vendors and devices and whatnot, but I'll go over that if you guys have specific vendors that you work with um, you want to know if we support that. Um, chances are we do, uh, but go ahead and ask anyways. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch slides here. Give me a second. I'm just going to go ahead and end this uh, amazing PowerPoint that I have set up for you guys. All right. So with a show of hands, uh, just really quickly, a uh, quick yes in the chat window or uh, anywhere where I can see it, I just want to make sure that people are able to hear us. Thank you. Um, just go ahead and um, raise your hand or press yes so that you can hear me. Thank you. I'm just going to wait for a couple other people to do that. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. All right, just waiting on. I just want to get quorum. Once we get quorum, I will begin. All right, that, that looks like it's enough, uh, so we'll go ahead and start. So what you um, are looking at here is the Packertrap MSP RMM interface. Uh, this is All your modules are up here at the top, so your navigational pane, I guess you can call that. Uh, devices is what we consider your home screen. Some people consider their dashboard their home screen. The difference between the two is the device screen is multi-tenant view, so that way I can see individually per customer basis, whereas the dashboard, I can kind of consolidate all that into one quick snapshot of uh, certain critical uh, features that I want to look for, uh, disk utilization across all my customers, or um, uh, something simple as CPU. I mean, we can get a little more technical uh, later with that information. Completely brandable, so your logo will go up here. Again, as I mentioned, all your modules up here. So the things you can do from this screen. From this screen, um, and I'll cover all these little tabs right here in a little bit, so don't get confused. These are just you know navigational pane tabs, uh, how to organize devices, the policies, where all the alerts and remediation happen. I'll cover that towards the end. From this screen here, it's color coordinated for you. So as I said before, we're a holistic IT infrastructure monitoring solution, meaning that we can monitor anything with an IP address. We do it both agent and agentless way. So when you see a little guy like this, that means that there's an agent installed. We recommend installing agents on any and all devices possible because it gives us better control of the environment, as well as it opens up a few features that only work with an agent. However, we can monitor a device through SNMP and WMI, so it just limits you to just the monitoring component of that. There are automation tasks that can be done. Um, but not as many as there are if there's an agent installed. And it's good to have an agent installed because if Sally ever takes her PC, as I like to say, and you know decides to work from home at Starbucks, hey, as long as she's got internet connectivity, she's in the middle of an iceberg in Siberia, you have uh, either you know access to her device via remote control or um, you'll be able to monitor it and send back commands to the agent to do initiate behind the scenes. Color-coordinated, so uh, yellow means that there's an alert triggered or some kind of error on the device that needs to be addressed. Green means the device is up and running, and red means that the device is down. Just basic general overview of this particular device, CPU memory, and then if you highlight a device, it gives you a more, a little bit more detailed help of the device there on the right-hand side. So a few things you can do from here. First of all, we have built-in network diagnostic tools, such as a TNTP server if you want to transfer files, um, WMI scans, port scans, uh, NetFlow and uh, Syslog Listener. Uh, these are independent to capture the network traffic flow. However, you, if you need a continuous stream of that, so you want to have an historical data, we can do that as well. By right-clicking on a device, gives me a couple other options. Remote controls. We have various forms of remote control, one of them being uh, RDP, VNC, SSH, Telnet, web browser, and web proxy. Uh, the two that I'll talk about uh, right now that might not be familiar to the new people uh, on this meeting is the web proxy. Web proxy allows me to log into a particular device without having to 
uh, access the customer's uh, subnet. Um, so if I want to access the GUI of a router, firewall, printer, I don't have to RDP into the customer's environment first to get that. I can just click on web proxy, and what it does is proxy through the agent that's monitoring that device. So it establishes a local connection. Uh, Expert Assist is a hybrid remote control tool. Um, it's a kind of uh, it's, a, it's a it's a combination of RDP and VNC. It allows you behind the scenes remote control as VNC does, but it also gives you the capability of managing the device through RDP and um, if you need to remote control into it or whatnot. So it's a highly valuable tool when you're trying to do things behind the scenes without interrupting uh, the workflow of the end user. And we can get into more specifics of that if you guys have any questions on how that works, how that's deployed. Um, it's all accessed through here, opens up through a web browser. So it doesn't log you out of Packet Trap, but allows you to stay in Packet Trap and then also do remote control sessions. You can have as many of these open as you want. So there's no limitation on the remote control um, in terms of the software, but there are limitations in terms of you know the bed that it's residing on. So if you're running this on a two gigabyte server, uh, chances are the remote control is going to be a little clunky when you're running it on 10 PCs at the same time. We also have a few network diagnostic tools built in here, such as Traceroute, Traffic Jam, Wake on LAN. Uh, you can see some of these are repetitive in there. So you have a DNS audit, graphical ping scan, parse scan. So there's a couple of ways in Packet Trap to always access things in different um, forms. Monitors and alerts, uh, so if you want to configure for an individual device without having to go into the global policy or you know, create a whole new policy, you can just configure on an individual device. And I'll talk about the alerts towards the end, kind of wrap that up and tie the loose ends that I've been talking about here, because that's really where the rubber meets the road is in the alerting framework. We also just to quickly mention, I'm not going to go into in depth with this at the moment, but we have Avaya Shorttail um, modules. Uh, these are a little bit separate than the policies because we've pretty much tied down the the, the monitors, so you can't adjust them. Um, so what these monitor these modules do in Cisco Wireless Controllers uh, is just exactly what they say. They're, they're modules that monitor specifically the Cisco Wireless uh, Controllers, so you'll have your access points all listed out, the configurations and uh, MAC addresses and stuff like that for them. Um, <clears throat> you'll also, so if I go ahead and just click on that there for you, you'll also have um, uh, from Avaya, you have you know sh uh, alerts such as jitter, latency, and whatnot. And I can cover that later if it's a specific VoIP question that you have or how we go about monitoring VoIP-related issues and whatnot. Uh, save that towards the end or throw it into the Q&A, and I'll talk about that specifically. It'll take about five minutes. Um, obviously, we can have a conversation for a week just about VoIP functionality, and I don't want to go down that road. Um, my monotone voice is, is bad enough that you guys have to listen to it now. Uh, network mapping. Network mapping is a cool feature. Um, what this provides is a topological view of your customer's IT infrastructure. So you can customize a map such as you have here, and what I've done is I've created groups and I've bundled into the groups different subnets from different locations. So here I have the status of their overall group. Double click on this and I get a nice topology of the customer's IT infrastructure drilled down into here. From here I can drill down even further into the device and I'll talk about that in a little bit once we start drilling down. But this is giving me, you know, um, where are the bottlenecks occurring? Kind of a nice picture view, a uh, visual view of your customer's IT infrastructure. So it's helpful in the sense of trying to narrow down, uh, you know, what segments of the network are being affected and, uh, you know, how can we uh, 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 customize our approach to mitigate the effects of whatever issues that may be occurring at the particular site. Groups, uh, groups are for aesthetic purposes. Uh, some of you might be looking at some of our competitors and they have groups and they use that as policies. We don't. This is just for aesthetic purposes. So you can group devices based on type, vendor, uh, location. So our policy, our, our, our licensing policy um, is per site. So we don't care about the number of endpoints you actually monitor. Uh, so uh, this way it allows you to scale uh, without having to incur more costs, which is important if you're dealing with environments uh, that are, you know, 60 or more devices or users greater than that. Um, for us, it's going to be the same exact price that you would be paying as if, you know, the customer had 20 devices or 160 devices. It makes no difference. So I'll come back to this screen in a little bit. Um, I did, you know, about 15 minutes of talking right now, so I want to just 
pause a little bit and see if there are any questions right now, anything that I've covered that is unclear. Um, just going to give you guys a chance to uh, type out or uh, refill your drinks if you need to. So the, uh, somebody asked about the UCM. So that currently is in production right now. It's not part of the um, the the uh, public build, um, but it is going to be coming out in the near future. So uh, we do one of the things that's not mentioned in here. I just want to go ahead. We do also support IPSLA. So if you have Cisco uh, and it supports IPSLA, we can get the MOS and jitter and latency through that um, by simply enabling it using one of our tools. One of the key things, uh, let me jump back into here. So go back to the main view of the office. So from this screen here, um, you know, you're getting basic up and down system information. So I want to know more. How do I know more? Simply double click on a device, and this is going to take me to the individual device view tab where I'm going to see all the installed applications and do everything I can from where the screen I was before, you know, remote control, running the tools and whatnot. But now I'm going to be able to kind of look into the processes that are running, the memory utilization, and all this can be compounded or, or, or aggregated in the alert that we set up and customize, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So, um, you know, uh, the way our alert's based is if A, then B. So well, we can customize what B is, whether it's informational stuff that we want to know, uh, what running processes are consuming the most memory, or uh, maybe we want to create an action based off a specific condition, uh, reset conditions and stuff like that, or just simply be alerted off, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So here we have our critical applications, patch management status, I'll talk about varying that for a little bit, installed application, disk volumes, hardware inventory, asset management, port map is what we use to build a network map out of. So all these detailed information about the device, all the Windows events logs that have been triggered, um, obviously you'd be receiving alerts for them, uh, but if you simply want to monitor things, you can do that as well here. So the idea here is that you don't have to actually RDP into each individual device to take a look at these things. It's all congregated into one single pane for you and across all your customers. Again, you can do pretty much anything we can for remote control from that screen that we were on previously. I'm going to click back. So that is on the uh, server side of things. Um, if you wanted to see more, just, again, Q&A, and I'll go back to that, no problem. Uh, let's jump into routers and switches, as I mentioned. So we monitor the desktops, servers, no problem. Uh, but where are our... our, our um, kind of niches and where no one else kind of comes into play is on the network side, is that we're very, very strong on the network. So let me go ahead and just jump into an HP Pro Curve switch. And we support any device, as long as it has an IP address and it supports SNMP, it doesn't have to have both, it can be one or the other, um, just limits the functionality and capabilities of what we can do because of the device. Um, if it supports that, we can monitor it. If it's got syslog, SNMP traps, we can collect those and alert off them. Um, as well as the remote control capabilities. I mentioned the web proxy, telnet, SSH to the networking devices. So here I have an HP Proker switch. One of the cool things we support on an HP Proker switch is configuration backup. So this is important, especially when, you know, um, if somebody goes in and changes a specific setting or, or configuration string, um, it might, you know, reroute uh, a particular path. Uh, so packets aren't getting to where they're supposed to be getting, and all of a sudden, you know, customers are complaining that they're not able to access their application. So if that ever happens, or you know, Sally and, and shipping all of a sudden decides to be an IT guru and resets the router, and you know, you, you don't have your configuration file saved. So this right here, you'll be able to drop down this list, and it will compare to the previous running config or backup config, whatever it is that you're monitoring on this. Using the TFTP server, you can actually transfer that back over to the router. Network traffic flow. So this is kind of a very cool piece. This is both a uh, techie and also on the sales side. The sales side, it allows you to show, demonstrate to the customer, whether through a report or a dashboard, um, the the activity of their employees. So if the employees have, you know, um, temporary workers or project-based workers or it's a you know a small mom pop shop and they want to know what Sally's doing because she works from home or developer's offices and stuff. You know, we have a lot of people working from home. We want to be able to, when they log into the network, we want to be able to know 
what they're using their time with. So with this tool right here, we can go into websites, and I can see what websites people are going to. So if I need to adjust my QoS settings or uh, you know create more firewall rules and stuff like that to block certain things, uh, you can easily just go ahead and connect to this device right there and do that from here. So network traffic, so I got my applications, conversations, communication between devices. If I double click, for instance, on World Wide Web, I can see all the devices that are using World Wide Web, their IPs, the host, the you know critical information about the ports they're using, interface utilization, percent of utilization of the flows being collected, timestamp. I can click on trend chart here. It'll show it to me in a graphical display rather than like a pie chart, so I can see it over time. So sometimes you'll find that Pandora or certain applications, they buffer. So you're not going to see a continuous stream, but you can see the duration that this person has been, you know, listening to Pandora. Depending on what environment you're in, what verticals you're working with, it could be pertinent or it could not. So um, fortunately enough, they let us listen to Pandora here. It's also the cool thing about this is that when you receive an alert, uh, interface utilization is high or low. I'll talk about that again in the alerts. You can go into this module here double click on a particular interface and you can see exactly what's been going on in this interface, who's been using what, what applications, so you can troubleshoot and see which ones are the one other culprits and then drill down even deeper from here. So if I wanted to drill down to this device right there, I can see this device's individual utilization. I can see this hour, uh, top to all the way to last year if I wanted to. I can also see the top 10 to the top 5,000 flows being consumed. Yeah. Going to networking. Networking is just, again, self-explanatory here. It monitors all the interface utilization. This is actual time. Um, this is detailed view, um, very data-orientated view. Uh, if you want to present a line chart or a graphical display, that can be accomplished in the dashboard view, and I'll show you some of those charts in a little bit. So if there's not any questions on this specific, uh, I will move on now to uh, our reporting framework. And I'm sure I forgot some things down the road. Uh, we obviously monitor ESX servers. Um, you know, I have uh, Fortinet and, and Sonic Walls and, and um, uh, a host of other devices in here that I can show you, um, you know, short tell and stuff like that. So I'm trying to keep this high level uh, to give you guys a, you know, uh, a general overview, um, but try to focus it on some business case scenarios. Uh, I know that you know in a time frame that we have, we might not get to everything. So I have people asking me how to monitor hardware uh, level alerts, and I'll talk about that towards the end. So just remind me on that. So here we have pre-canned reports. You got individual device reports, group reports, uh, network performance summary reports, flow chart reports. You can schedule these reports on a frequency, on an interval, so that they can be sent out to the customer. And that's all done through the schedule report manager. Um, if there is a report in here that you would like to customize or, or add a report that may not be in there already, you can do that in the report manager gadget. So the best way to actually uh, go through this, and I'm not going to go through the steps here. It's a pretty simple wizard to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, walk through that uh, configuration. If you have any questions, it's all documented in our community, which, in fact, we have built into the product itself. So if you have questions, we have answers. So um, let me give you a quick you know, uh, type of report. So device inventory. So after you've onboarded the customer, you enabled the SNMP, you deployed the agents, now you want to do a device inventory, so before and after. So this is a device inventory report, completely brandable here. Um, you got your IP addresses, CPU, memory, description, vendor. You just run this report, save it for your records. Let's go in. So I'm going to skip ticketing because we integrate with a variety of PSA systems, including our own. So uh, that's another webinar uh, my colleague Matt work does. Um, and if you have any questions on the PSA, I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. Uh, it's with integration, configuration, how to set it up, the workflow. Um, our current release is 6.8, so if you are interested and you know, like what you see and you'd like to uh, jump in and you know uh, hit the mutters, uh, hit the waters, uh, just download the solution from our website, and uh, you know somebody will reach out to you, one of the sales guys, I'm sure, uh, and. Uh, uh, we'll set up a call where we can actually go into your system and take a look at your configurations and see, you know, what you've done and what you'd like to achieve. So I'll help you out on that. Scripting. 
Uh, so we have a scripting module, pretty advanced. We use any kind of standard language script, uh, Java, Perl, uh, VB, PowerShell. So this all can be automated. And the scripting module is really, you know, the behind-the-scenes type of um, secret agent type of work, so professional services that you want to do. So when you're creating, you know, onboarding a customer with 50 new user accounts, you don't want to sit there and click and create 50 new users. You can automate that with a PowerShell script. Um, same thing for mounting exchange drives, um, pretty much anything you can think of you can do with a script, installing third-party applications, um, running advanced programs, stuff like that, all can be done behind the scenes through a script. And this is one of the things that requires having an agent. So you know, no agent, no scripting. <clears throat> we have a depository of scripts in our library here. We also have a few more advanced scripts in the community, as well as uh, because we use any kind of language, um, programming language, you can uh, copy and paste the script from Microsoft Script Center or Dell's script repository. Uh, there's advanced, there's, there's, there's a lot of scripts already pre-created for you, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel and just copy and paste, change a few parameters on the script, and you're set and ready to go. Let's go into, oops, there we go, patch management. So patch management uh, works in conjunction with Windows Us or without, basically with this patch management window con uh, interface, you are controlling all the um, policies, so to speak, um, across all your customers from one single interface. So you don't have to log into 20 individual Windows Us servers or configure 50 different PCs. You can all do this uh, through the Packer Trap system here by going into settings. Now this is also something that requires having an agent. So two things that we've discussed, actually three, expert assist, patch management, and custom scripting all require an agent, and the next one will too. So here you can select you know, group priorities, uh, approving the patches, uh, white labeling them in here so you can see what patches are available. Go ahead and approve them one by one, or you can do it on a group level just like that click approve and any security critical update will be approved installed at this particular time and if it requires a reboot what would you like the system to do and there's a few other options I mean if you're not you know if you just want to leave everything alone and just configure automatic updates or you just want to monitor it just to see what updates if they're out of compliance so that you can go back to the customer and upsell them and be like hey listen you know we've been monitoring you guys for less than a week and here's you know all the patches that you guys don't have right now I mean if we were doing this for you you know you guys you know, security vulnerabilities uh, compliance regulations and stuff like that um, you guys need to be on the latest and greatest because certain applications are just not going to work and you're going to have a lot of uh, uh, registry corruption issues or whatnot so uh, it's always good to be on the latest and greatest patch, and with Packer Trap, it allows you to actually, you know, on your own, test out the patches so that you're not pushing something out that may break something down the road. Um, cancel that. We have antivirus currently. We only partner with uh, 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 Viper. So uh, this deploying Viper has got its own little separate policy section to it, so you can exclude, include specific folders and extensions you want to scan. Um, and whatnot. So these are more of advanced settings. And this is separate than the policies with all the alerts. So, so AV is a little bit separate. Patch management, custom scripting are all done a little bit separately. Um, in, in some cases, there is there is overlap. So in terms of when you create a condition and you want an automated action, you can have a custom script run. So I'll show you that in a little bit. So jumping into the administrative section, I'm not going to spend too much time here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one of the cool things we have is baselining, um, which allows you to create a trend, trendable data metrics for certain fields. Um, and that's actually done in the retention setting. But here you're configuring the interval, the frequency. And then over here, the trendable data, you want to go into retention. This is all the trendable data that we have. So instead of creating alerts off fixed values, which may send false positives here and there, you can actually create alerts off baseline so that it will mitigate against the false positives and keep your technicians not becoming complacent. So, you know, the Murphy's Law, if 100 things goes right, the 101st is the one that's going to screw you over. PSA integration, branding, uh, license update, uh, SNMP MIB library. So if anything out of the box we don't support, you can create a custom SNMP monitor for that. If you have a question about how to do that, uh, I'm not going to cover it in this, but if you have a question on that, I'll be more than happy. I know somebody just asked that right there. So it's uh, pretty simple. There's a few ways of doing that. Um, there's documentation on the community you can reference on how to create SNMP, custom SNMP monitors. Um, if you have your own proprietary MIBs, just send them over to us. Um, you're not... You don't need MIB to really create the custom SNMP monitors. The, one of the ways you can do that is running an SNMP walk and doing it right from there. Um, 
So I can, you know, if you have specific questions on that, I can train you on how to use our SNMP walk tool to, um, without the MIB library, to locate the proper OID that you want to create the alert for. User management, creating accounts for people and notifications, uh, SNMP, T, setting, configuration, whatnot. So the dashboard view, one of the things we mentioned was you know, the detailed view that we saw in the interface tab. This right here is where you can configure a knock view across all your customers. So something that you want to see that will notify, you know, uh, up and down. I want to see all my servers in up and down. You know, I just want to stare at a screen and I want it to flash every five seconds or change tabs. You can throw this into a full screen mode. This is the this is the module that you would be in. So you can throw up one studio just in a big, you know, white wall and have it cycle between different tabs that are relevant and important to you guys. So one of the charts that we can create. Go to a second. So here I put the network traffic flow data. As I mentioned, you know, you don't have to run a report for the end user. You can actually create a customizable dashboard that they can log in on their own with read-only credentials and view their own network traffic. So if they want to know, you know, you can train them to use this tab. And if they want to know who's using what or what websites people are on, the CEO or the CTO of the company, the owner, can log in on their own and take a look at it. And this is something you can sell them as well. You can see you can make nice little line charts here that you can go back in time and go, okay, well, what what was going on here? You know, why was my uh, interface utilization low? Was, you know, was I down during this period? Why was I down? And whatnot. So this is my QA build, guys. Just keep in mind that you know, I, I do a lot of just testing and configuring and just messing around with it. So... It's not neat, um, but it does kind of give you guys a feel of, of what its capabilities are here. So, All right. Without further ado, um, we're going to jump into the last kind of five, ten minutes of my demo into the alerting. Um, so I'm just going to highlight one of the policies here. I'm going to go into here. So you have all your devices across all your customers here. Monitors. So all alerts are directly proportional to the monitor, the frequency of the monitor, and whatnot. So if you create an alert, you know, alert me if ping goes down. Well, ping is being monitored every minute. So how many minutes? One, two, three, whatnot. So you got to keep in mind the uh, settings. There's also some monitors have settings to them, accompanied. So uh, time to live, uh, you know, ping per node and stuff. And I can get into more detail what that means, but. Uh, so just keep in mind that some of the monitors have additional settings to them. Some do not. You can apply custom SNMP monitors from here. Just click on Add Custom SNMP Monitor. It's going to go to the library. So here I have created you know, toner level for printers and stuff. I can just click on Select and apply that monitor to this policy. Alerts. Let's go into this. So we have pre-canned alerts. Who gets notified? Who gets blocked? Um, you can configure specifically like notification um, hierarchy. For people. This is just the administrative side, everything to the left. So who gets notified, severity, priority of the alert, friendly name, reset condition, if you want to generate a service ticket out of it, all this stuff. And then this is everything we can alert on. So all the way from active directory counters all the way down to short tail packet loss. You got TCP ports that are open, not responding. We can alert off that software inventory changes. So if somebody changes and installs and uninstalls specific applications, we can alert off. Also, if you're onboarding a customer, um, sometimes you might want to make sure that certain applications are installed. Sometimes you might want to make sure that certain applications are never installed. So you can create a template that will go, okay, if we find this program, I want you to delete it. And this is where the custom scripting will come into play because you go program not found, going to pull up a screen, and the program list is generated from the devices in here. So if it's not in here, you can just type it out how you see it and add a remove program. So we're just going to go to uTorrent, found, new condition, custom script, find the script that you have that specifies, you know, uninstall. So we're going to go to uninstalling scripts. I believe I might have one here in professional and whatnot. Just select the script, and it'll uninstall it for you. And there's a few nuances and kinks into user rights and all that, and we can work with that on scripts. And once you understand how that works, it's pretty easy to uh, navigate. Um, so yeah, these are all the conditions. So software version changes, uh, temperature speed, uh, temperature, uh, fan speed, and whatnot. Interface utilization, CRC errors, 
Um, any application event log, we have counters for Exchange, SQL, Active Directory, um, memory. So pretty much anything you can think of, we can alert off and then initiate a auto remediation task from that condition. So you can group conditions. You can also have reset conditions that will, you know, same way it automates a system-driven alert. It will also close out the alert. So uh, that way, you know, if something happens, let's say memory utilization, this is a simple one. Um, memory utilization hits, you know, 90%, and then five minutes later it's back down to zero. So the alert was triggered, but then it got reset so that um, the, you know, it, you'll get both, both, depends how you structure the alert. So if you want to get those notifications, you can. If it's just something that's simple, you just want an alert being generated because you're looking at it in a knock view, uh, the device will turn yellow, but then it'll turn green, and you're good to go. So no alert, but you did see it in a knock view. So depending on how you want to structure that approach from your business. And that's the benefit of Packet Trap. We allow you to customize, you know, how everybody's business is a little bit differently. Everybody does things a little bit differently, workflow and whatnot. So Packet Trap, um, although we kind of, you know, herd you into a specific workflow, uh, that workflow is amendable and it is customizable. So we're not going to, you know, it's not anarchy, so to speak, but it is a, it's controlled anarchy, I guess you can call it. Um, let's see what else we can talk about. Hardware inventory changes. Uh, so pretty much all of these alerts we can alert off. Blackout schedules, so if you're doing maintenance or, um, you know, you just don't want to receive alerts, you want to suppress them for, you know, uh, from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m., you can go ahead and do that so the alerts get logged, but they're not waking you up at 5 a.m. in the morning, you know, stupid things like that. Uh, we also offer NOC services, if you guys are interested. Uh, we do have a partner that provides uh, NOC services and stuff like that. Uh, you can talk to your sales rep about that. So, um, without further ado, that was a you know, quick high-level overview of package reporting. Somebody asked me about uh, alerting off hardware failures. So, it depends on, you know, if you're uh, Dell or uh, HP, which we won't mention, um, uh, we can alert off it. So, either through SNMP traps, which would be the industry standard best way because there's no monitoring interval. It's, it just triggers in terms of RAID failure and stuff. You want to know right away. Uh, but it also can be done through system event logs and whatnot, which some of our competitors utilize. So um, we're actually the only ones on the market that can capture SNMP traps the way we do in syslog, um, which is beneficial because those are um, instantaneous. Um, they, they get sent off when a condition is met. There's no reply message, nothing like that. It just gets sent to collect it. Um, whereas in an application or system event log, you have to wait for the monitoring interval to kick in to have the agent alert you off it. All right. Um, you can create custom policies as well by copying existing policies, so you can create templates out of this. And then all the policies can be found, local and global policies as well. So that's a quick high-level overview of Packtrap MSP. Um, if there's anything else, you guys, I'll take um, a back off a little bit. I'm just going to five minutes. I do encourage you guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, just go ahead and let's, let's start up a conversation here. Uh, I know that we're doing it through texting and writing, so uh, without getting a rigor mortis or anything like that, uh, just type in a few words of things that you'd like to take a look at or you're interested in or you need assistance in setting up, I can show you how to do that. So to demonstrate uh, expert assist, let me see if I have a uh, computer that um, got an agent on. One second, I think it is down. Yep, so that one is down. Let's try this one right here. So if you put in the WMI credentials for Expert Assist, it'll uh, log you in automatically, um, meaning that you don't really remember, 
remember, need to remember the password. Um, those are stored in the credential store in Packet Trap. And only people through the studio can actually access that. So here is Expert Assist. It's loading. Uh, I don't know the username or password to this device. I can take a guess. And I'll most likely be wrong. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Highly encourage you if you uh, want to check that out and how it works, just download Packet Trap and try Expert Assist on the server that you download it on. You'll see it's, it's pretty flawless. Um, let's see what other neat things I can show you guys that we do. Again, anything with an IP address we can monitor. You know, notifying users on the back end stuff, uh, working with PSA. Got a really quiet bunch today. All right. Um, so let me throw up my uh, contact info out there. Um, if uh, you know who your sales rep is, just contact them. If you have any questions um, regarding our solution or pricing model, uh, I can cover all that as well. Uh, just opening up the line to everybody that you know. You guys want to chat about your kids' life. Uh, Things that are going on, uh, we can turn this into a uh, Sally, Jesse, Raphael for the next 15 minutes as well. I'm not a registered nurse, but I'll try. Um, let's see. If you just want to tell me my jokes are not funny, I can do that as well. Ah, this ticketing system, this this is a, a archaic. Uh, it's going away. Uh, it's going to be uh, completely removed and eventually. Right now, when you integrate with the uh, Pactra PSA, what you can do is uh, what pretty much that does is just it, our PSA just replaced the ticketing system. So that's archaic. Um, so right now, you, you either have a system-driven alert or you can create a uh, manual ticket by going to tickets. And then if you have PT PSA created, it automatically launches into the account that. Uh, is created. You can create a work order straight from here without having to go anywhere else. So I don't have mine configured. That's why it's taking me to here. You can see that it's still up there. So PTPSA configuration has not happened. I can show you the uh, web proxy tool, absolutely. Um, keep in mind, I am on the network right here, so uh, it, it'll work across, but this is, I just want to be honest and tell you that I am on my network. So, But this is going to work the same way. So it pulls it up in incognito. So here's the Dell printer, for instance. And boom, I'm on the Dell printer. So this would have worked exactly the same way had I been in my house or somewhere else where I'm accessing the studio from. So if I want to be a real cookie in this office right now, I can you know change the printer settings right now, and people are going to be running around without their head. For ten bucks, I'll let one of you guys do it. All right, go back in there. So any specific things you want to monitor on servers? Anything, you know, what type of verticals are you guys dealing with? Um, you know, if you guys want to share that with me, I can go into scenarios of uh, how you would go about deployment and maybe some of the first things that you would need to uh, kind of monitor and manage for them. 
you know, financial institutions, you want to be able to manage the firewall. So making sure that certain ports are open, making sure that certain ports are not. Um, being able to make sure that, you know, if there's a big file being sent over, that uh, there's a limit to it and that, you know, if you receive that error, you want to uh, get an alert off that um, so that people aren't stealing information. Or at least you can track who's doing it. So you can notify then, you know, the owner and be like, hey, listen, you know, this guy's been sending a lot of uh, – uh, traffic and uh, anything going on with him. I mean, so you guys can be the kind of uh, IT doctor to you know your your customers, help them utilize IT computers to better manage their business. This is really what we're doing. You know, we're creating a peace of mind for our customers that they can rely on us to present them with raw data. That they can then use uh, in, in a fashionable manner. Of course, we're not dumping you know zeros and ones in their plate, but um, uh, present that data to them so that they can make reasonable, rational decisions. Uh, and sometimes that's key. And, and having timely information is even critical. And that'll put you above you know the pack. And um, not necessarily whether you use Packer Trap or not, but any kind of automation tool that you can use. Um, I'm, I'm obviously biased. So um, I would want you to use Packtrip, and I think Packtrip is a great tool uh, to accomplish all those tasks. Um, so we have some really big accounts that we work with. Uh, I'm not going to mention them on the phone here, but uh, you know the product is very scalable. If that's the concern. Uh, somebody asked me that right now. So yes, it is scalable. It uh, depends on, you know, the, it's an on-premise solution. You can throw it in the cloud if you want, but uh, it's, we don't host it right now. So uh, if you throw it into a server, just make sure the server is beefy enough to handle the, the load that you're doing. And then there's also practices in terms of scheduling alerts and, and patch management to, to uh, disperse the load on the server, so to speak. So it's not you're not patching 500 computers at the same time, you know. And there's a workflow for that that can be built into your SLA, which is another component of our company that we have as a whole business unit that helps you structure that SLA and the pricing uh, that goes along with it uh, to help you guys. So if you're starting off new, as some of you guys are, um, and are getting into the managed services space and it's kind of confused, I'm like, how do I charge so I'm not hemorrhaging any costs? And, you know, how much time is it going to take me to set this up and all this? And these are all valid concerns that, uh, you know, we help you with. So. By a show of hands, who wants to hear me talk more? No hands going up. All right. Um, so um, there are no questions. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor for the next five minutes. And, uh, again, please visit our website to uh, download Packer Trap. It's uh, www.packetrap.com, P-A-C-K-E-T-T-R-A-P. -E -T -T -E I'm sure once you exit out of the web browser uh, or the WebEx, a little pop-up's going to appear to our landing page there for you. So get ready for that. Um, download the website. Uh, download the software. You can install it on, you know, just for demo purposes, on a desktop PC. Uh, just keep in mind that it's meant to run on a server platform, but you can do it on a desktop PC uh, for demo purposes. System requirements is all covered on that. Um, so, Yes, we do have agents for both Mac and Linux. VNC for Mac and SSH for Linux. Setting that up is covered in our community. Uh, depends what flavor of Linux you're running. Um, we may or may not support it. Mac 10.4, 10.6 and above.
All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you for joining. I uh, hope this was an informational uh, webinar for you. If, again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at sales at packetrap.com. Visit our website. Our phone number here is 415-293-6500. That will get you the uh, just option two will get you the sales line. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, chatting with all of you one-on-one -on -one if uh, I'm lucky enough to get that opportunity. Thank you so much. Have a great day.